I think I'm starting a video here. This is the start of the video crossing from Fort Lauderdale to Abaco. So in our last video, you saw us go through the cut, Fort Lauderdale, show where we anchored, all that stuff. We just did it in reverse. We are working our way to Marsh Harbor, Abaco to drop off these relief supplies for Hope Fleet. And, and we're very excited. We had to say goodbye to Kieran this morning, which honestly hurt so bad. <laughs> oh, Kieran, no! <laughs> Well, to be fair, you guys are going to the Bahamas, so you can't be that upset, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, we're not that upset, but, <laughs> but I'm going to miss you, dude. You okay. could be going back up north to Charleston, so... <laughs> Kieran is unfortunately leaving the boat today. He's moving on to bigger and better things. He's going to go work on some super yachts, make some actual money. But don't be sad. I'm not sad because I know he's coming back. We're going to see him again very, very soon. He's going to stack up some money, and then between boats, he'll come hang out with us. I'll do a zoom on that. Our Young Cruisers Association flag is fine. And now that we're actually going places, we can start linking up with people. And yeah, it's feeling like a proper finished yacht. Uh, a no boat is ever finished, but things are great. We're listening to Bob Marley. Charlie's in the blanket, absolutely chillaxing. She made smoothies this morning. It's a great freaking day. A little bit of swell, but I think even this little bit of swell is about to go away. It's comfortable. It's perfect conditions for us to sail right now, but we're just gonna rock with the head sail and motor our way through the Gulf Stream because we left a little bit later than I want and I want to get through most of the Gulf Stream before nightfall. Uh, and I think that with this current behind us, motor sailing, we're going to be cooking. And cooking we were. Nine knots is pretty quick for us, so the first day of the trip was a fun one for sure. I even saw 10.8 on the screen for a second. I know this is basically a jogging speed, but to me, it feels like we're racing to the good vibes in the Bahamas. I stayed up until about 5 or 6 in the morning when we changed shifts, and not long after that, I was woken up to an amazing surprise. We've got someone waiting for you, babe. And apparently I caught a fish last night. Yeah, well, I just looked back and I'm like, ah, that fish is so dead. It's just waterboarding. Look how intimidating that is. I caught a fish. <laughs> okay, dude. Um, I feel really bad, one, because, like, I hate that the fish, like, got caught. I didn't even get to fight it or fuck with it. And then it just died because it was being dragged behind the boat, apparently, last night. Yeah, I, I don't know what type of fish it is, but in this little coral reef in the Caribbean in Bahamas in Florida, which came with the boat, I have determined that it is either a Spanish mackerel or a Cero. Boom. Boom. Oh yeah, baby. This is what Charlie's about to see. Hey, this is your new roommate. I don't know about that. That's <laughs> going in bloopers if it doesn't go in. Oh, by the way, um, if anyone wants to send us a bigger cutting board, this is what we're dealing with. <laughs> 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 Don't let him fall off the bat. Can you imagine? Oh my god, you'd be so upset. It had honestly been a while since I filleted a fish, but I couldn't believe how much meat this guy provided. With a little rice, it's like six meals for the two of us. And I can already tell you that this guy is truly delicious. Also, massive shout out to Deckett. I've spilled literally everything you could think of, including fish guts now, on this flooring they gave me and it always comes clean with just a little bit of water. It's a great product. Not long after tossing some fish guts overboard, we were visited by another massive pack of dolphins. It's always so fun to watch them play in the wake. We were running a little ahead of schedule, so we needed to slow ourselves down to arrive with daylight. So we sailed off our course and did exactly what anyone would do when all alone in the ocean with their lover. We played some exploding kittens. The next day I caught some sleep in the cockpit as we approached Marsh Harbor. Since we'd be checking into a new country, we had to raise our yellow quarantine flag, which was honestly a really good feeling. So we are about to go through the Man of War channel. And as far as the Abacos goes, it's the deepest and easiest to navigate channel. 
but there's some concerns. There's something called a rage here. A rage is where a bunch of waves will come unobstructed from the Atlantic. And when it goes from thousands of feet deep to 20 feet deep on a shoreline like this, it can make this inlet, this channel, unnavigable with breaking swell. So we have come at a really calm time. There's not a lot of swell out here and we're coming at rising tide. I think since we're new, going through the cut was pretty nerve wracking. Most of the time we only had a few feet of water under our keel and having recently run aground, we were sketched out. But the water here is so clear that we could use visual navigation to help us through. So I sent my girlfriend up forward and she was the bomby police. Denny is down, boat is anchored. We feel pretty confident we're staying in the same spot. We have eaten some dino nuggies which scratched off our Bahamas on the map. We got Charlie loaded up, as you can see. Boom. We're gonna go meet Pastor Erlen, and he's gonna help us get through customs, make sure they don't give us any problem because we have a bunch of like home gardening kits and stuff. And if I were to just walk up and say, hey, I got a bunch of plants on board, then they would ask some questions. But since we're here with some relief supplies. Fish. Baby fish. It should be a pretty easy check-in. I'm excited to get on this water. There's so much shit in the way. I just got it. Oh, oh, it feels so good. Oh, oh. No bad vibes, no bad vibes, okay? All right. I didn't want to film, but that's the custom building right next to the public dock. It was more or less easy. Uh, everything, you know, I, I, I think I nailed 90% of what we needed to do ahead of time. It, it got a little complicated, but that's why the pastor was there, Pastor Erlen. Pastor Erlen came and knew everybody in the office and was like, hey, don't give these people a hard time. They're bringing relief supplies. So it was pretty seamless. Look at that baby sea turtle. Oh my goodness. That is an amazing feeling. This beer is the culmination of eight years of work and dreaming, and it's gonna taste so good. Thank Mmm. How good. All right, back to the boat. Yeah. Boom. Because free drinks and free food are on the boat. We're gonna go chill. We're exhausted. I want so badly to explore, but it's been a lot, so after passage, I think we just want to chill. We just want to chill, right? Yeah. Eat some food, sit on the couch, make plans. Do some research on places to go. So we're going to head back and chill for a while and get back at it tomorrow. Unload all that stuff and go exploring. Okay, good morning. Day two, Marsh Harbor, Abacos. And today's the big day. So we're about to offload all of these relief supplies for Hope Fleet and their partners here. Uh, on the dock, I'm gonna get them all off the boat so we can clean the boat, reclaim it as a home, and then we're going exploring. We're gonna go see some of the beauty of this place. So I gotta get some of this stuff off the boat. Let's get ready, because they're gonna be here in like, what, 30 minutes, an hour? So we gotta get moving. Let's do it. So for anyone who has no idea what I'm talking about, let me explain. I met some guys from Hope Fleet at the Annapolis Boat Show months ago, and when they told me they used cruisers to deliver relief supplies to those in need, well, I immediately wanted to be a part of it. Now, Marsh Harbor was wrecked by Hurricane Dorian back in 2019. It was a Category 5 hurricane when it hit, and sadly, they're still trying to recover. Hope Fleet loaded us up with some buckets filled with gardening kits, bed sheets, school supplies, and more. But I heard that the school sports teams were really struggling to get the gear they needed, 
So I posted a story on Instagram asking y'all to help fundraise. So the mission is to deliver all these sporting goods, these toys, these bats, these baseball gloves to these kids in the Abacos, but we needed some help. So we reached out to you and we raised $1,500 through an Instagram post. Thank you so much for contributing. But we also had some help from Dick's Sporting Goods. So we're here today in Charleston at our local Dick's Sporting Goods just before we leave to go to the Bahamas. We're gonna pick up everything we need. They've contributed some money, some gift cards, and what better place to get all the stuff that these kids need. So thanks to y'all and thanks to Dick's Sporting Goods, we're about to make some kids very, very happy. But we'll get to that later on. You know, I've waited for batting cage for over a year. So now we're on our way to Mermaid Reef. We're straight vibing. We have snacks, waters. Oh, we, didn't, we forgot foods, but we'll get food Honey later. Kay, yeah. yeah, we're gonna do some swimming. So we're tied off. There's mooring balls here at Mermaid Reef. I didn't even bring a swimsuit, because I'm such a dummy. We're gonna see what's beneath us. We are massively hooking the little guy up. He's tied to the floor with a life jacket on and an umbrella. We didn't want to leave him on the boat, so he's gonna be in the tender right here next to us. Look at that little guy. He's like, this is chill. This is fun. How good is that? We swam with a sea turtle just now, dude. It was sick. <laughs> Can you believe we left you like that? You look very upset. <laughs> you need help? Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, salty. Mom's salty. He looks so pissed. You have the best setup. In I know, he's got an umbrella and a water bowl. <laughs> We can't leave him on the boat because he gets separation anxiety. And you pee everywhere. And you pee everywhere and you protest. <laughs> he literally looks pissed. <laughs> <laughs> So this is sweet. We just found, it was her idea, we just found this swimming pool. I was too scared. I thought we were going to pop the dinghy because it's so shallow and just covered in rocks and coral. But over there is Hope Town. 
and then back over there is Marsh Harbor. So we drove about five miles in the beanie, and we <laughs> and, and we just found this amazing clear crystal water pool. It's literally the size of a pool, and we can stand up in it, and it's just so nice. I mean, look at this water. Now that we had our fill of the water, we headed over to Hope Town, a beautiful island with a mooring field packed with cruisers. We couldn't believe how cute and clean it was here. Apparently this place was a refuge for British loyalists fleeing the states after the Revolutionary War. I guess they brought some money with them. A lot of the houses are immaculate vacation rentals, so we just walked around like we were house shopping for a few hours. I can't imagine what it would be like to live here full time and just get around on a little golf cart know everybody on the island? What a place to retire, am I right? Charlie seems to like it here too. We had worked up quite the appetite and weren't ready for the five mile dinghy ride back to Gray's, so we swung by Captain Jack's to grab some stiff drinks and some fried mahi fingers. Charlie definitely seems to like it here. When we got home, we sat out in the cockpit to look out over the beautiful Marsh Harbor anchorage. Then this Ochimur 55 pulled up and gave me some serious boat envy for a while. We could hear folks cranking it up over at Colors, but we just stayed in and worked, because tomorrow's going to be a massive day. The next day of the trip was my favorite. We were starting it off with a six mile dinghy ride to Tahiti Beach. Whee! Nice. Gas acquired. 30 bucks. You're going to be able to pull? Yo! Yo! Oh! Ah! Ah! I'm not exaggerating when I say this is the nicest beach I've ever seen, let alone been to. This is, we've actually found paradise. Mush. With pleasure, my love. Mush. Mush. Oi, oi. It was time to head back to Marsh Harbor and switch things up a bit. We were picked up by our new friend Lisa. She works with many hands, one of Hope Fleet's partners on the ground. She took us out for some lemonade and introduced us to some locals. 
She took us for a drive to see a different side of the Abacos. I saw a resilient place with an amazing community. But even five years after the storm, you can still see the setback that it caused. Rolling up to the school, we were about to see what happens when you walk up to some kids with new soccer balls, cameras, and a wiener dog in a backpack. Needless to say, it was chaos. You know, when I was a kid, if you asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would say a firefighter or a veterinarian. But if you ask kids nowadays, a lot of them will say they want to be a YouTuber. And I think that's pretty darn cool. I can't even see my hand. <laughs> I got to jump in for some soccer practice and was quickly juked out by a 10 year old. Then we headed to another school. We had some more soccer balls to give out, which were promptly put to good use. But when I saw the weightlifting session, I really wish I had brought a barbell. It was time for baseball practice. This is Lisa's husband, Sam. He's taken the baseball program under his wing to try and give these kids a positive influence and a safe place to be after school. It's so important. Sam is gonna be building a brand new batting tunnel with the gear we delivered, and the team is so excited. We brought a whole bunch of stuff and handed some of it out, then the captains picked teams, and it was time to get a little dirt on those pearly white baseballs. That's right folks, your boy even hit a home run. Nice play! Wow! I really have to thank those supporting on Patreon for keeping this channel afloat. I absolutely love my life and it's a blessing that I get to do this for a living. Traveling around the world, meeting amazing people, shining the light, it's just so rewarding. If you'd like to donate to the community here in Marsh Harbor, links are in the description. And please be sure to come back next week as we sail to Nassau and pick up some hitchhikers before an amazing week-long trip through the Exumas. Thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day. Peace. I've let my crocs make a noise. It's going to be good. Look at that, you can stand. Oh my God. <laughs> You're so dramatic. Hi, mwah. Why won't they let you inside, huh? It's craziness. It's craziness. You did just walk in a lady that tried to walk in. That's the whole last stoppage. Holy shit. So cool. Oh, hi. As you can see, this is a very serious mission. Why is he so Jason? Jason, 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 Jason